What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter. Welcome back to part three in the series about how to start using SaaS today in your workflow. In the previous video, we talked about variables and mix-ins, which are awesome, powerful, amazing, and will change your game forever. But today, we'd be talking about partials and imports. Okay, so jumping right into partials and imports and why you'd wanna use them is if you look on my screen, I'm we're exactly where we left off. We're building out our code base and so far it's looking really good, but we're only at 17 lines of code. And the idea of partials and imports is really to make your CSS more modular and more scalable as you're building out your project. Uh, what do I mean by modular and scalable? Well, instead of having one giant style.sass you know, file that you're working on that ends up being 500, 800, 1,000, 2,000 lines of CSS code. It's great that we're using SAS and it's processing over into real world CSS that works, but one of the added benefits of using SAS is that you can cut your code into multiple pieces, partialing it out, and then importing it all back together. I think this example is gonna help us understand. As I'm building out my project, let's say I wanted to build a footer, like I had a footer tag inside of my HTML and I wanted to start styling. I wanna cut this up so I don't do my styling here inside of my main style.sass file, but instead I wanna create its own individual partial or file. And the easy way to do that is just to come up to your files and create a new file, however you wanna do that. And we're always gonna start our partials off with an underscore, it's really, really important. The underscore lets sass know that that is in fact a partial. So we're giving it the little underscore and then we're just gonna call it footer dot sass okay and we're gonna take our code right that we were kind of using back there and putting it in here now whatever the code is like maybe we want the background to be aqua we're gonna put that in our footer partial now it's not doing anything because right now it's just an unconnected random partial of CSS. We need to actually bring it back in to our main style, right? So we wanna come in here to our style.sass and we just wanna write at import and then you just write the name of the, the partial. You don't have to put the underscore in there because that's just the identifier that lets SAS know that there is such a thing called a footer partial. Well, now that we've put footer, we just press save and you'll see that those styles have been compiled into our style.css. It's important to note that if you're gonna use partials and import statements in SAS, that the rules of specificity still apply, which means that you know the browser is gonna read your document from top to bottom. And so in SAS, if we were to take our footer import statement and let's say inside of our footer, we're gonna use that variable of primary, right? So far, so good. But if we were to put our footer above those declared variables and try to save that, it's gonna kick an error out because it's telling us, I don't know what that variable is because the browser's reading the style sheet from top to bottom. So we just need to make sure that we put all of those things in the correct space and then it's working. You can even see it's picking up our variable. And so, so that's kind of like thought number one on how you wanna make sure you're being careful with your SAS, with your import statements and your partials. A little kind of rule of thumb for me is I like to have a, uh, like a, a main kind of SAS style sheet. Um, so for instance, we have style.sass, that's fine and dandy, um, but maybe these don't need to all be in there. Like maybe this is um, like, right here is gonna go into a main partial, so we could cut that and create a new one called underscore main dot sass, and we would put all of our main, those main styles in there. And then maybe up here, we have another partial that we're gonna cut that all that code out of, and we'll call these something like helpers dot sass, and we'll put all of those helpful items that we've created, that helpful reusable code inside there. Now, when I come back, I just wanna make sure I do these in a good order. I'll put an import statement here and make sure that my helpers are at the top so that they can be used by everything else. And then maybe after that, I wanna have import main. Whoops, I should put at import, okay? And then I'm gonna save that and it's gonna compile everything out. Now, every time we create a new partial, I just make sure that I add it in to this, this single style sheet that's kind of gathering them all together. So maybe I have a header there and 
maybe I have a blog post there. And the good thing about this is it keeps my code very, very modular. I know exactly where to go when I want to work on individual items. So if I want to fix up the blog post or the header or the footer, I know that I'm just going to open up my footer partial and work there. This is how CSS should have always worked. And this is one of the best ways to maintain your code base with partials and imports. Well, that's it. That's partials and imports. Powerful, modular way to write your CSS so you don't go crazy trying to figure out where you wrote that code. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and stick around for part four where we talk about selector inheritance and a little bit of math as well. I'll see you in the next one.